My junk journal is a place for self-reflection and creation without mistakes. I think it's the perfect place for me to narrate over what I'm really struggling with right now. When I first started YouTube, the first thing I didn't want to do is look at other people's videos. I wanted to make my videos as unique as possible and not follow the template of other people. I wanted it to be a safe place for collage artists and people that just love collage to come together and celebrate a passion that we all have. It definitely filled a spot that I felt was missing in my life. Although there are many, many videos of artists, uh, a lot of them are painters and I just felt like there was a very empty space when it came to collage artists. After I had made five or six videos, I decided it was time to open Pandora's box and look at what other people were doing. I was hoping to get tips of how I could improve my videos and learn from others. By this point, I had already made my unique feel, right? And to my shock, I no longer felt unique in my content. I felt as though I was doing things that everyone else was doing. At the time, I had just listened to a podcast talking about how the artist vlog is dying. And I didn't really understand how that could be possible until I saw a comment saying, why does every artist have to have a black cat walking through the background, lush plants around them in their studio, and have background music that is lo-fi in every single one. Those things are all 100% me. It felt like the things that I wanted to share with the world were things that everyone else had already done, especially when these things are just who I am. For example, I listen to lo-fi for about six hours a day. We love lo-fi girl radio on YouTube. I always grow up with animals and a cat is the perfect pet for when you're 20 years old and lonely. So I ended up with her, even though I didn't even mean to adopt a cat, she found me and decided to never leave me. And my botanist sister always made fun of me for having a black thumb. So being able to take care of plants now is something I definitely take pride in and try to surround myself with. And even though I'm loud, fun, whatever you wanna call it outside of the home, when I'm in my home, my space is my calm space and I was really trying to nurture that energy within my channel. I really feel like long form video ties into this calm energy as well, just because I do have a TikTok as well and that's where I feel like I have to cut everything so short in order to please people's attention spans on that app. So this is a place where I really wanted to take my time with everything and be calm and reflective. And then on Instagram, it's like 100% a finished product or a really fast reel that's extremely boring. And now that I've had more experience watching channels, I feel like all the art YouTube girlies are all of the same energy. I think that we all love the calm, long form video. I've always been really fascinated by human patterns and I feel like everyone that felt the same way and resonated with what I just said has found their way to YouTube and being a creator as an artist. We've really all found our safe place on YouTube. Where I think I'm quite different is in the narratives, like this one, for example. I used to have a really strong passion for writing and then I went to university and it kind of ruined it for me because I had to write so much. YouTube has given me the space I needed to come back to my storytelling and narrative form writing. I'm trying to provoke conversations that you might not have every day and you might have not have thought of before this. I try to show my process start to finish so that if someone is inspired, they can go do it themselves. In my events vlog, I tried to show off as many artist events as I could and show how diverse these events can be and that maybe I would inspire someone to try out going to one of these types of events. My other angle, I would say, is that collage just feels like it seems to be a unicorn medium on YouTube. I, there's barely any content for it. And worldwide, I definitely think that there's less collage artists than painters or mixed media artists, for example. In the present moment, I do feel a little bit stumped on how I can really stand out. This week I watched Divergent for the first time in many years and it kind of made me feel like that movie is more real than we thought. There's definitely these different niches within YouTube, within society, and where people tend to go because of who they are. For example, on YouTube you have the travel vloggers who are exciting, always outside, always trying new things. Then you have the artist vloggers who are always homebodies, creating really beautiful things and maybe are a little bit more introverted. And there are just a hundred more of these niches. Besides collage, I love cooking. I love reading in the park. I love photography, videography. I love music. I love to party with my friends. I love trashy TV and I love old school movies like the 1960s movies. 
I love wacky interior design. I love to plan events that will make amazing memories. But when I think about the reason why I would want to share these things about myself in regular videos, it feels like I'm just trying to prove that I'm not one dimensional. And then the reality probably is, is that my whole life I went going thinking that I was a unicorn, but I've never been surrounded by people that are like myself and YouTube maybe is the place where I have people that are similar to me. And maybe the anxiety behind that is that this is the first time that I feel that I've been pushed into a category. And this is a little bit corny, but the phrase that I've always loved is misfit you fit because although we're all so different, we all probably fit in somewhere um, with our differences. As artists, we're put in two extreme boxes all the time. When we're showing our art, we're in person, we are 100% full of energy, having to really people please and sell and be a business person for ourselves. It's basically the top amount of presence that anyone could give in any situation. You are just giving 100% of your time for 12 hour days for potentially days or weeks. And then while creating art, you're the farthest thing from a social setting most of the time. When I record a video while I'm making art, it's usually the first time of day where I hear my voice. We're deep in flow creating our pieces and if we get really into it, we could be gone for weeks and no one could hear from us. <laughs> These ideas really intrigue me. It's really interesting to see that artists have to really be two types of people even though they're one person. I hope that you are as equally intrigued as I am. I'm definitely having just one of those weeks where I'm thinking a lot about things that I'm guessing other people don't think about as deeply as me. I'd love to know what you think. Does this resonate with you as an artist? Do you feel that you have to be two types of people when you're at shows versus in person? Uh, do you feel like even if you don't do art for a living, if you have to put on an artist attitude when you're doing art versus when you're with your friends or family? Do you think the artist vlog is dead and a waste of time? I don't know if I see the art vlog dying, but I definitely think it needs a little bit more sparkle. And maybe I don't really see the big issue with having similarities between vlogs. Maybe we're all more similar than we think, and maybe that's a good thing. I feel like everyone wants to feel included in something, but then once included, people think that it's too samey same, and then they're criticized for it. I just happened to be reading a book right now, and it has an excerpt from Andy Warhol, and I just wanted to read it because I think that this is really interesting that he was kind of saying this as well. I'm just gonna summarize it, but he basically says, I want everyone to think alike. I think everybody should be a machine. I think everybody should be like everybody. It's hard to be creative and also hard to not think that what you do is creative or hard not to be called creative because everybody is always talking about that in individuality. Everybody is too good now, really. Like how many actors are there? There are millions of actors. They're all pretty good. And how many painters are there? Millions of painters and they're all pretty good. How can you say one style is better than another? You ought to be able to be the abstract expressionist next week or a pop artist or a realist without feeling you're giving up something. It's already happening. It's this style or that style or this or an image of a man. Some artists get left out of that way. Why should they? Then the interviewer asks, is pop art a fad? Warhol answers, yes, it's a fad, but I don't see what the difference that makes. An artist ought to change his style without feeling bad. That's probably why I'm using silk screens now. I think somebody should be able to do all my paintings for me. I haven't been able to make every image clear and simple. I think it would be great if some people took my silk screens so that no one could know whether my pictures were from mine or someone else's. I really liked this excerpt and I hope you did too. He's definitely a very interesting guy and I think that he's onto something because in the past we saw the Renaissance and that was a time when people were basically making all of the same pieces. There's the Renaissance, Baroque, there's all these art periods and all the art in them look the same. And now we're in a time where everyone is making stuff that is so different from one another. Realistically, I can't even picture a time where we will be able to all have one movement that we're all working towards as artists.
Now, do I have a thesis to all the word jumble that I've been talking about for the last 10 minutes? I promise, yes. This piece that I'm creating right now is all about the themes that I just talked about. The idea of artists fitting into categories, into boxes, is just an absurd one. So I made this piece of the people coming out of their pots that they were kept in and exploring and growing out of them. And this piece is called Exit because we are exiting our boundaries. I've never actually believed in the idea of fitting into something. I think that we always have to just vibe with the situation that we're in. Sometimes it feels good, sometimes it doesn't, and we just go from there. I think that everyone is an individual and that is where this kind of ties into all of these themes. I definitely don't think that sameness is bad. I think it's only bad when you're trying to fit yourself into a category that you don't fit into authentically. But I think that's what makes people true artists is when they feel like they can just create without having the judgment put onto them. You don't need to stay in the box. You can go to a different box. You can come back to the same box. There's definitely a lot of mobility in life and in your artistic practice. I'm loving this junk journal page. I love the graphicness of it, the abstraction and the weirdness of it. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and I hope that you're subscribed to my channel for future videos.